Ryan, thank you very much for being here today. We just had a fantastic conversation with GRI members and participants about data center. It's a very important topic. There are billions of dollars being deployed in building data centers. Uh, artificial intelligence is really driving society more and more and more. And it's not a trend. It's something that's definitely going to increase. And data centers are linked to that profoundly. And you, you are uh, leading uh, uh, data centers in Clayco, a very important organization here in the US, but active in other countries as well. Can you just tell a little bit more about you and your organization before we go to the questions? Yeah, of course. And Gustavo, thank you. Appreciate being here. Um, so Clayco is a $8 billion dollar design development uh, construction firm. Uh, we primarily focus on advanced manufacturing, data center, uh, healthcare, and other market sectors all throughout the U.S. Within our company, we have everything from real estate services to design and engineering to construction, as well as self-performed capabilities on mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, as well as concrete. Number of offices throughout the U.S. Uh, Clayco Compute is what I'm the president of. Um, that's our dedicated full service delivery for data centers. Fantastic. And within Clayco Compute, we have 57 active projects across the U.S. 57. 57. Yeah, it's a wow. very, very busy market for us and extraordinary growth. Uh, as an example, in 2024, the data center business under Clayco Compute did $3.6 billion dollars of revenue just in data center projects. That was more than double the amount that we did the prior year, which was 1.6. And that growth trajectory is, is forecasted to continue to grow. So the Clayco compute aspect represents about 50% of our overall entity within the Clayco enterprise. Quite a lot, quite a lot. It's a big, it's a big part of the business, very interesting. Now let's talk about the, the it's a very new sector. Still, a lot of things have been changing, including the, the, the tenants, the months of the, uh, when it comes to the data center. What's changing the last couple of years that you could uh, uh, point it out here? What kind of change do you see in the tenants' demand? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a new sector. It's also an old sector um, as well. And, you know, as an example, we've been building data centers for a lot of our Fortune 500 office customers for a long time, but they were a much different type of data center. You know, they're called what was an enterprise data center. So mm -hmm. you build a great office building for them. A portion of that, either within the office or external to the office, would be a small 15,000 square foot data center. You know, as the market evolved, that enterprise started to go out to a more co-located model. Um, and then certainly, of course, the hyperscale model, which is where we're in today. Uh, we did our first hyperscale data center um, for one of our large clients in the Pacific Northwest back in 2017 is when we started. And I'd say since that time, we've seen the hyperscale requirements change quite a bit. Primarily back then, the market serviced the cloud uh, infrastructure. Everything we do from a business perspective, what we do on our phones, storage of data for companies. Obviously now, with the emergence of AI, a lot of those requirements have changed quite a bit. So artificial intelligence requires a lot more power than the cloud service does. It has some different requirements of that power. Some of the reliability can look different from a cloud data center than the requirements of an artificial intelligence data center. And then certainly within AI, there are sub-segments as well, large training facilities, which train the models that are generated for AI and inference. And both of those two product types will have different demand requirements from the customers, um, but also how those facilities are constructed, developed, and built. One quick example, AI really generates and demands a lot of power, um, and the density inside the data halls at the rack is a lot higher right. than a typical cloud data center. So cooling systems, some of the design related to that, as well as the redundancy requirements will look different from one product to the next. I'd say some of the demands though from the user, because these facilities are taking up so much energy, um, there's a big focus on making those facilities as efficient as they can be. So looking in terms of power efficiency, water efficiency, sustainability within the materials, 
that are constructing the facility. Um, I shared an example in the session today, we partnered with one of our clients, AWS, recently, and we're able to come up with a solution that removed 60% of the embodied carbon wow. in the concrete mm -hmm. that was used for the facility. So, you know, society demands that as data centers become more prevalent, there's certainly a, a stewardship that needs to be done to um, ensure that, you know, we're producing the most efficient buildings possible. It feels like for someone who is not from the data center industry that the demand is growing, will keep growing when we see the movements in many countries from big players like Blackstone or Brookfield deploying more and more capital into the sector. We see in India, for example, we have a massive group of uh, members there, how much investment in data center is happening, but also in Brazil, in Mexico, in, in many countries, uh, everything, it feels like the demand is there and there are a lot of players that want to go into this sector. But you rightly pointed out to the, que to, to, to the fact that the, the energy consumption, especially for AI, is higher. And the challenge is probably for, probably for expanding uh, these uh, uh, data centers probably will, will, will be more and more relevant. What are the key challenges for the industry to keep growing in a sustainable way? Yeah, it's, it's, it has a lot to do with the power. You know, with these larger deployments, some of the locations of where these data centers are being built has changed. Uh, the cloud has typically been clustered in very well-established markets. That doesn't necessarily have to be the case for AI. In fact, the largest driver is power availability. So a lot of these large AI projects are being taken to very remote locations where the power is available. But create some challenges in terms of making sure that there's enough on-site craft workforce to be able to build right. these projects. And by necessity, there's a lot of creativity that has to go and play with that. Early communication with the client, pre-positioning, some of the resources to be able to do these large deployments in areas that traditionally just don't have access to, large amounts of labor. But then also trying to take as much of that labor off-site as you can through prefabrication, modular uh, type components that you would then ship to the data center site. But power is really driving a lot um, a, as a key constraint right now. So, you know, one of the things we're doing as an example is we're working with our clients to try to help position land that does have power availability. So coordinating with the utility providers, we've got great relationships with utility providers across the U.S. So trying to streamline that ramp up for their deployments, because without power, these projects will really go either to other locations mm -hmm. or they just won't be able to be developed because uh, power is the, the key ingredient here. And that sustainable design aspect so that you're utilizing that power as efficiently as possible is certainly a key aspect of it too. Ryan, let's imagine that our audience, let's, let's, let's put ourselves in the place of our audience here. We're talking with a CEO of a developer uh, or a private equity fund that has been you know, keen to understand more about data center and to penetrate the market, to, to, to deploy capital or to, you know, to invest in, in data center. Is it too late now? Did he miss the opportunity before? We, he, does he still have time for that? And if so, what would you do as a, a first step to understand the industry and start getting involved to a point to be a player? Because I remember Clayco, I spoke to, to Bob, the founder, not long ago, and data center wasn't that big. And you guys now, look, 50% of the business being data center, so you guys did very well. What's the step that they, or the steps that they would need to follow uh, uh, to become one uh, uh, player in the data center industry? Yeah, first, um, we're still very early in this market. There's a lot of growth opportunity. There's a lot of demand. And just quickly on the demand side, it, it really is a digital transformation. There have been moments in history where technology has come and has completely changed how society operates. AI is one of those things. We're living in that right now. And, and things from you know, how it's going to benefit healthcare for individuals, how it's going to benefit you know, a, a teacher for every student you know, are some of the promises for AI, but there's a very key national security component as well 
that's driving almost a space race, the equivalent of a space race for these large deployments of training and inference. Everything that we do in the future in some way will be affected by AI. So we're very early. Uh, that demand needs to be met. Uh, and there are a lot of opportunities for new entrants to come into the market. In terms of advice, like any good thing, you should study the market and understand. Um, but I'd also say, look at what is specific and unique to your organization that you can offer as a value to mm -hmm, the clients. Mm -hmm. The challenges the market faces are pretty consistent and pretty predictable. Power, labor, um, supply chain, if you have relationships, as an example, with a local government agency or a utility provider and you can expedite a path to power, mm -hmm. that's a great niche to be in in this market. Because if you can control land and you can control land that has access to power, you're in a very good spot to attract one of these providers mm -hmm. and be able to participate in the value chain. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And I know you mentioned uh, many, many projects in the U.S., but are you looking to developing projects in other regions of the world? Yeah, we have. We, we've, we've certainly, we do a lot of design all across the world right now. And again, part of our offerings include design and engineering services, and we're active in a number of countries outside the U.S. in that aspect right now. We've also done construction in, I'd say, broadly North and Central America as well. Um, sometimes we partner with different organizations to do that. Largely, when we venture outside the U.S., it's been because one of our clients has requested and taken us with them to that location. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. It was a very useful conversation. Thank you. Appreciate it, too.